Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and in this video we're going to demonstrate the new Surfazer 100 HSX long range 3D scanner. Now, Surfazer has long been known in the industry as offering the highest accuracy, highest resolution, best data quality available in a long range scanner. If you talk to anybody in this industry, they can tell you that the Surfazer has no equals when it comes to accuracy and data quality. Typical applications for this scanner are things such as aircraft, military vehicles, automobiles, uh, boats, large industrial equipment such as power generation, uh, big uh, uh, impellers, big housings, big castings, things like that where you need very good data quality and accuracy either for inspection or reverse engineering. Okay? Now, what we're going to do in today's demo is we're going to talk about the new 100 HSX uh, and some of the new features of this model over its predecessor. We're going to talk about how it works, how the scanning actually works, and then we're going to talk about downstream applications, how we take the raw scan data, how we put it together, merge it, align it, and then what do we do with it as far as for inspection, reverse engineering, and we'll also look at some sample projects, sample objects we've scanned uh, with this scanner. Okay. So let's first talk, start and talk about how this scanner works, okay? This is what's called a phase-based scanner, okay? It's laser-based, phase-based. Uh, it's a class three laser, so it'll work in direct sunlight, outdoors, indoors, doesn't matter. What you have here is a mirror on a 45 degree angle that spins around, as well as the whole base itself spins around. So it's able to scan 360 in both directions, captures data 360 by 270, because obviously we have the base of the scanner here, it can't scan underneath itself. So you just end up with a small hole right underneath the scanner where there's no data, okay? But the way phase-based scanning works is there's a laser in here and a sensor. Laser shot out, hits the mirror, redirects out until it strikes something, changes phase. The sensor picks that up and basically it's recording depth. So one point at a time, it's collecting an XYZ value of where that point is in 3D space, okay? But because it's moving 360 by 270, or, or really 360 by 360, the cat capturing 270, it's collecting up to a million points a second. So it's literally a laser line that gets, you know, uh, sent out and strikes an object and, and gets returned and recorded uh, to the scanner, okay? So that's essentially what phase-based scanning is, laser-based um, type scanning. Now, let's talk about the new features of the 100 HSX. First thing is it's smaller size than its predecessor. Um, it has a handle now on top for carrying it around or moving it or mounting it on your tripod. It has battery operation and it has remote control operation. So the battery operation is great because when you're in a remote area and you don't have power that's easily accessible, in the past we'd have to take a generator. With this new one, we can take multiple batteries and run all day long uh, in a remote uh, 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 application. The other thing is it's remote control. So what that means is I can either use my smartphone, a tablet, or a PC and wirelessly or remotely talk to the scanner and tell it what to do. Okay? Um, and we're going to get into that and show that here in our demo today. So we can remotely control it and it's battery operated. Because many times we put it on a jib arm, we might put it on a scissor lift and, and go up high, mount it up on some scaffolding or some railing. So not having to drag power, not having to have our PC right next to it with a data cable is a, is a big plus in this, this new unit. So again, even better accuracy, even better data quality, smaller size, battery operation, and remote control are all the new features of the 100 HSX. Okay? So uh, what we're going to do here first is start and we're going to scan. We're just going to use this trailer. Uh, uh, for our, our demo today and uh, we're going to show you how the actual scanner works, take some sample scans uh, and then we'll talk about the downstream applications, go into more on the software side of things. So let's get started and the first thing we're typically going to do is what we call a preview, okay? The reason we want to do a preview is because most of the time we don't do a 360 by 270 scan. Now if I were doing this room and I wanted everything, I would do it. I would put it in the middle and just tell it to scan. But most of the time we're scanning an object in an area, okay? So what a preview is going to do is it's going to take a very quick scan at kind of a low res, allow us to window in the areas or area we want to scan, and then it'll go back and scan it at a higher res, which we're going to control, okay? 
So again, it's just doing a quick scan, and then we'll go back and, and, uh, and tell it where to scan and by what resolution. And how resolution is controlled with this is lines per degree. So what that means is if you took one degree and you sliced it up, that's your lines per degree. And this scanner will work anywhere from 24 to 92 lines per degree. So what really dictates that is how far away your object is and what kind of point spacing or density you want. So for example, if our trailer is 10 feet away and we want 1 8 inch spacing, the minimum of 24 lines per degree is probably fine. If our object was 50 feet away and we wanted an 8 inch point spacing, we might need 50 or 60 lines per degree. Now the scanner comes with a chart to aid you in how far, you know, the distance away and the density of points you want, and you just put in that, that number, okay? But obviously for the preview, we don't need that. We can just do a very quick scan, which it's done and it's finishing and it's going back home, and then we'll go in and uh, window in the area and tell it where it's scanned. Uh, but we can completely control the density of the data with that lines per degree, okay? So it's done scanning, and what we're going to get here in a second is basically the preview, okay? So here's the entire room. You can see the ceiling, the floor, everything except right underneath the scanner. And we simply just come in and we pick two points. And that's going to window in the area we want to scan, okay? And I could have multiple areas. I could pick another box up here, another one over here. Sometimes there's objects that, you know, multiple objects we want to scan. And uh, now we just come in and tell it to scan the selected area. So let's talk about the scanning itself. So this type of scanner, as with most, are line of sight scanners, meaning if it can see it, it can scan it. So for example, for us to do this entire trailer, we're gonna need multiple scans. And we can either move the trailer or we can move the scanner around, okay? Now if you're doing something large, like an aircraft, you're not gonna move the aircraft, you're gonna move the scanner. And for example, if we wanna get the roof, we're gonna need to get the scanner up high so it can see down. That could be done with a jib arm. Could be done with a, a this tripod will go up about 10 feet. Uh, you could go up on like a scissor lift. Uh, anything to get up and then shoot down and scan. If we want to get underneath and get the frame of the trailer, we could literally set the scanner down on the floor and scan. So, you know, it's not uncommon that we'll have six, 10, 20, 30, maybe 50 scans, depending on how large our object is and how complicated it is, you know, the different areas we need to scan, okay? So uh, it, it can be, you know, it can be numerous and typically as numerous scans. Uh, aligning the data, uh, because we're taking these scans from different locations, we'll go into a little more on the software end, but it's basically either 2D targets or 3D targets, such as spheres. Uh, 2D targets are basically uh, a flat target that you can place on the object, or you can just use the object itself to align the data. And again, we'll show some of these different examples later. Okay, but basically now it's, you can see scanning at a slower rate and it's scanning our object and when it gets done it'll return home. Now this scanner comes in two configurations, a short range and an intermediate range. The short range is good to about 30 feet, uh, you'll get data, and the uh, long range is good to about 100 feet. Uh, so depending on your application, you'll get, uh, 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 you know, if you're doing basically like vehicles or smaller objects, the short range is a good fit because it has a, a smaller uh, laser size, spot size, to get even better uh, resolution and detail. And the inter intermediate's a little bit larger that gives you, uh, you know, more distance. So you can get out to about 100 feet, which is about 30 feet. So uh, this is the medium range uh, or intermediate range uh, configuration of the scanner. Okay, so the scan is done. Uh, we, we now can move the scanner, do another preview, window in our area, and take our next scan. All the scans are written to an SD card. I could pop this card out, put the next one in if, uh, if I want to start looking at the data on my laptop. But again, completely remote controlled uh, uh, from the laptop, battery powered, uh, written onto an SD card. And again, the reason it's on an SD card and not done wirelessly is these scan files typically are 500 megs to two gigs. And that's just uh, difficult to, to move that much data quickly uh, over a, over a network, so it writes to an SD card, okay? So just to kind of uh, 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 go back through and talk about the uh, scanner, what we've showed so far, is again, this is the new 100 HSX. Uh, it offers even smaller size than before. It offers the battery operation. It offers the remote control. It offers even better accuracy and better data quality. So it's a great new package uh, uh, from Surfacer 
and really the next generation. So the best scanner, the best long range scanner in the world has gotten even better. So next what we'll do is we'll go into the software and we'll take a look at uh, all the scans we did on this uh, trailer and uh, show how we can align them, merge them, uh, uh, work with them, uh, how it can be used for reverse engineering, for inspection, and then we'll show some other objects we scan just so you can see the quality of the, the Surfacer uh, uh, scanner and what it's able to do. Okay, so here we are uh, with the finished scans of the trailer. Now what we did is we took uh, six scans around the trailer and we've aligned those scans. And there's a couple ways you can align the data. We're not going to go into that a lot in this demo, but again, it can be uh, using spheres, uh, targets, or just the geometry itself. And we're in uh, Geomagic Design X, uh, formerly known as RapidForm, which is 3D scanning and inspection software. So let's do this. Let's uh, hide all the scans uh, except one of them and take a look at that first. So here's a single scan of the trailer. And again, you can look at the data quality here from the Surfacer. And again, all this is is points, but you can notice here you can see the rivets, you can see the detail. Uh, this is the uh, uh, tread plating here on the front of the trailer, etc. And if I just zoom in on this, you literally kind of see it's just lines of points. And this is the lines per degree we talked about. Um, uh, in regards to it, you know, and so as you get closer, uh, you can actually see what it is. Again, it's just points, and as you zoom out, uh, you get a better idea of what you know what that data quality looks like. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and show all of the uh, scans that we did. So we took six scans total uh, to walk around. We primarily got the size. We didn't get the top, but as we discussed, uh, we can put the scanner up high to get uh, to get up uh, get the roof area, and then of course down low. Uh, to get the uh, to get underneath it, okay. But you get an idea. So it scanned pretty much everything. The license plate area didn't scan because uh, that's very reflective. Uh, but you know the bumpers were were shiny metal. It picked them up. It picked up the tires, which are dark. It picked up the rims. So pretty much everything else scanned. Now all we have here again is a series of six overlapping scans. And you know if you look at each one of these uh, point clouds, they're anywhere from. 280 to uh, 533,000. It'll just vary a little bit, 360,000. So you can see you can quickly uh, end up with millions and millions of points depending on what you're scanning. Okay, but uh, essentially what we've done here is we've aligned these six scans through various methods uh, and brought it in here. Now at this point, uh, Design X will allow you to work with uh, these raw point clouds. You can cut sections. Uh, we could take uh, measurements, so for example, if I just wanted to measure from here to here and find out what that distance is, or here to here, uh, we could simply do that. Uh, so you can do and work right with this raw scan data depending on what your application is. Uh, the other thing we can do is cut sections and build solid model data, or we could do uh, inspection. We could load in a nominal CAD file and in an inspect this uh, part. The next thing we want to do is actually uh, merge all these scans together and turn it into a polygon model. Um, we want to take all these overlapping scans, merge all those points, and turn it into polygons. Uh, this could be hel helpful if we were going to do animation, uh, maybe CNC machining, 3D printing, uh, you know, other various downstream applications, or reverse engineering. There are some benefits of turning it into polygon data. So we simply tell it to merge. Uh, we'll select uh, all of our point clouds and uh, we'll go ahead and hit uh, execute uh, this command. Okay, for time purposes, <clears throat> we paused the video because it actually took a, a couple minutes to merge the uh, scan data and turn it into polygon data. But once it's polygon data, it's basically triangles, okay, instead of points. So as I zoom in, uh, you're not going to see little points, you're actually going to see triangles. And if I turn down the triangle edges and continue to zoom in, basically you'd see everything as, as, as triangles instead of points. Uh, and there's some advantages to turning this into triangles, as I mentioned, for reverse engineering and different things. But now we've got polygons. But again, you can see the incredible accuracy. You notice how you can see all the rivets. Uh, every dent in this trailer uh, is picked up. And again, this data has not been cleaned up. It hasn't been smoothed. It hasn't been massaged in any way. You're looking at the basically raw point cloud converted uh, to uh, polygon data, okay? 
So again, even a black tire, you're going to get some noise on the black tire, but this is uh, it's, uh, shiny metal. This is tread plate on the front. Uh, you can even kind of see the chains here uh, and so forth. So just incredible data. And again, we were at the lowest resolution setting of 24 lines per degree. So uh, again, you can see what that looks like. And then now we're ready for reverse engineering, inspection, really whatever we want, we want to do which would be our, total, our, our typical reverse engineering or inspection process, which we have other videos that go into uh, that process and show in more detail. Uh, but this is just a quick overview of the Surfacer. So what I'd like to do next is just load up a few other files and we'll kind of talk about some of the other uh, things we've scanned with the Surfacer just to give you an idea of what the data quality would look like on some other objects. Okay, so what you see here is uh, the scan data uh, from a very large aircraft, as you see here. Um, and again, for time purposes, I've already loaded this up. But, you know, this was effectively, I believe, about 60 scans to get the entire aircraft. So you can see we've got the, the, the complete underside of it, the top of it, pretty much everywhere. Obviously, where there's windows and stuff, it didn't scan. Uh, the propeller bays were a, a, a real dark black um, and uh, had a little trouble picking those up. but uh, but. You know, for the most part, you can see all the data. And then what we did from there was built a complete feature-based solid model of this entire aircraft, uh, including the uh, landing gears uh, and a lot of the details on here, uh, the windows, the doors, the antennas, uh, and so forth. So we can build a very detailed uh, CAD model from that scan data. And again, because the Surfacer has such high accuracy and resolution, we can build a very high quality, high accurate model from that scan data. Okay, so let's. Uh, so here's something very large as an aircraft. Let's uh, let's show something else. I'm going to load in next, uh, maybe uh, an industrial pump or impeller. Okay, so here we have a, a large uh, industrial impeller, and uh, if we were to measure this, uh, this thing is about four foot in diameter, just to kind of give you an idea of how large it is. But again, you can see the data quality uh, of the uh, Surfacer. I mean, it's going to pick up uh, just incredible amount of detail uh, on this part. So any nicks or dents or or anything on this impeller, it's it's going to pick it up. You can see some of the surface texture here. And again, all this is is raw scan data uh, that's been merged together uh, into a polygon file. You can see some pitting on the edge of the impeller here. So again, for some of this really high detailed, high quality work, uh, the uh, Surfacer is uh, second to none. I'll turn on the CAD model we then created uh, from that scan data, which you see here. So this is a feature-based solid model done in DesignX from that, uh, from that raw scan data. Not only can we uh, create that CAD data, but then we can also run analysis on it and uh, basically inspect our new CAD model uh, back to our scan data and see what it looks like. So we've designed the perfect CAD model which may or may not match the uh, the scan file because we made everything symmetrical but uh, you basically see color-coded differences between the scan data and the uh, CAD data. So let's go on and load uh, I'll load up uh, uh, some uh, sculpture uh, that we recently scanned with the Surfacer next. Okay, so what I've loaded here is a statue we scanned. Uh, this statue was basically full full size. Uh, so uh, with the uh, rock work at the bottom, it's actually about uh, seven seven foot uh, uh, tall. And uh, we've got two soldiers here. This was scanned so that it could be scaled up to about nine or ten foot uh, to make actual bronze statues. So again, if you zoom in and look at the incredible uh, detail that the uh, Surfacer was able to pick up. Okay, so you can see uh, here on their backs, let's roll it around to the front. Okay, and this was uh, quite a few scans, both the high and low, to get all the areas uh, on these soldiers. But again, you can see what the Surfacer is capable of doing. And this is actually about 18 million triangles on, on this scan that you see here. Okay, and the last one I'm going to show here, this is a uh, Chevy Tahoe. Uh, this was just a handful of scans, about four or five scans uh, around the vehicle. Obviously, we didn't get up on the roof and uh, underneath it. 
uh, and this was a you know production vehicle uh, and again just to show the data quality and this this vehicle wasn't uh, dusted or treated in any way you're looking at uh, really again the raw scan data uh, uh, on the vehicle okay so again certain things like that are really shiny won't pick up for example these chrome handles obviously things that are very translucent like glass uh, you're really not going to see anything but again everything else you're looking at untouched surfacer data so raw point cloud data uh, converted uh, into uh, polygon data so again just uh, incredible detail very smooth very clean uh, very accurate uh, data of this uh, of this vehicle so to wrap up this demo uh, of the new uh, Surfacer 100 HSX uh, again it's uh, even better uh, data quality even better uh, accuracy uh, than the uh, the current uh, or the past uh, Surfacer uh, in a new package with uh, battery operation and remote control and smaller size so this concludes the demo of the new Surfacer 100 HSX.